Wrong, wrong, wrong. Your intent is good, but your technique is flawed. Now, before I show you how to get natural looking skin tones, let's look at what each camera manufacturer has to say about their color profiles. When you look at Ori, they're talking about how they build their color profile, their color science around skin tones. Let's go to Canon, same story. Let's go to Fujifilm, same story. Let's go to Sony, same thing. Panasonic, exactly the same. Red, same exact message. So every camera manufacturer is building their color profile, their color science around skin tones. So then why do some cameras look green? Some have like magenta skin tones. Is it the camera or is it a user error? And that's exactly what we're gonna be revealing in this video. So let's start with our common mistakes beginners make when correcting their skin tones. For those that don't know me, my name is Kazi. I've worked with brands like Adidas, Amazon Prime, Universal Studios, and I make no just straightforward color grading tutorials so you can work with your dream clients. So now that we know that our camera manufacturers are setting us up for success, I've selected our five major usual suspects. So Ari Alexa, Blackmagic, Canon, Red, and Sony footage all in log. And I've gone ahead and done a proper conversion from log to Rec. 709, log to Rec. 709, log to Rec. 709, log to Rec. 709 log to rec 709 all right for all five shots knowing that camera manufacturers are giving you the exact image that you should be working with that is centered around your skin tones a beginner would look at this image and right off the bat go this is too saturated and especially the reds we got to pull that down so they will just go in their global saturation and start pulling it down so at first, nothing is wrong with it. This actually really, really takes care of all of our problems. The new problem that we introduced in this image is that we disrespected our manufacturer without doing the one thing that I'm gonna later tell you what a pro would do to attack this. We just went and stripped the life out of their look DNA. Now we got this image right here. It has the opposite effect of the last shot. The last shot was too saturated. This is not saturated enough. So then in this case, what our beginner would do, so they would add more saturation. And if I put my saturation somewhere around here, all of a sudden I just go, this is actually starting to look pretty good. Like there's some life in the skin tones now. But we can clearly see this just doesn't look natural. This is not how, I mean, you're looking at me in a pretty neutral lighting scenario and my skin doesn't look like this, right? Regardless of like, you know, if he's darker, I'm uh, more fair complected. That's not the point. The skin tones just should not look like that. So why did they look like that? Because we're injecting something that is artificial compared to what the camera manufacturer intended. And there are better ways to go about it, which I will reveal to you later in this video. Now let's look at this example and we can clearly see that the skin tones are just way more on the yellow side. So I'm going to hover over and just look at where it's going to form that circle. I mean, the skin tone is basically sitting right here and we can see how much green is in the image, okay? So normally, let's just do the advanced stuff. Let's key the skin tone and let's do a good job with it. So go in our width and close it down, push it around so we only, only, only affect the skin tones. Let's pull this up so we're just not affecting anything else. This is looking good. And now let's go ahead and use our denoise, push it. So the results are really clean. And let's just say that they're going to use their offset and pull some of that green out. And let's just say, even if we do something like that, now we're starting to pull that out and our image looks like that. So overall, the result is not bad at all. But then what's incorrect about it? What's incorrect is that once again, we've gone ahead, instead of looking at this image, can we correct this instead of like, can we manipulate this image? Like the manipulation when it comes to skin tones should never, ever, ever be the first step. So if you guys are doing any of these things, it's okay. I'm about to show you a better way to do it, which is a lot easier than even this. But first we have to establish the ground rules. What is natural? Let's talk about that. When it comes to Hollywood, our palette is all over the place. What am I talking about? So let's look at Queen's Gambit. Their skin tones look like this, which in a way still looks natural, but the entire color palette is very muted. 
And then the polar opposite would be Mad Max. I mean, this is crazy. Nobody's skin tones look like this, but in the context, it looked great. So you have to find your middle point. For me, let's just say if we talk about Apple's TV show, The Severance, I feel like that is like the sweet spot, the perfect middle where everything else is super clean, but the skin tones are just right. It's almost like if you just cleaned up your white balance and just added some contrast, you can just get there. I mean, obviously there's 10 trillion more things are happening to get that look, but if we're just focusing on skin tones, let's put Severance in the middle, let's put Mad Max to one side, and let's put Queen's Gambit to another, and you see exactly what I'm talking about. And that will be our goal in this video. So let me show you how we can go about achieving these natural skin tones inside Resolve without fudging too much with our camera manufacturer's color science. Oh, I totally forgot. We're doing something massive for Memorial Day sale. If you wanna find out more, it's gonna be in the video description, also pinned in the comment. Now I wanna show you three main techniques that pros would use to get natural skin tones inside Resolve instead of like what we've seen. So let's look at the most challenging shot first. What we're going to do here is we're going to use our hue versus hue. It's one of the most natural ways to swing your skin tones in the right place and get what you're looking for. So before I do that, I'm gonna right click, go under gamma, change this to linear, kill this, and then I wanna ripple that change to everything. Why did I do that? Because the changes that are made in linear are very similar to if you would have done that in camera. Again, we're respecting the color science of each camera manufacturer. So that's the goal. So the first thing that I wanna do, I know that color balance is all over the place. So instead of desaturating the shot, if I just fix the color balance the right way, it's going to put everything in place. So I'm just gonna go in my gain. Your gain becomes your offset in linear. And I'm just going to select that and start pulling this down. My main focus is in this white area. And I wanna make this look like what it should look like, let's just say, in a scene like this. And I think it looks like that. It's very close to white, but still has a little bit of tint that you would have in indoors. We already discussed that, that lighting is going to play the most important part when you're working with your skin tones. And just look at this, just by doing this, huge change. Now, I know that these lights are more orange than this gunky green, so I'm gonna go right here, and this is where we use our hue versus hue. Plus, like, there is this discoloration happening, red patches, and then this yellow and we're going to fix all of that. I'm gonna select red and I'm gonna pull this down. And now we're closing that gap. We're compressing these discolorations to come close to our yellow. And now I'm gonna go select our yellow. I'm gonna lift this up, okay? And I'm just looking at the lights in the back and I just feel like this is looking way better, what these lights should look like. And it closed that gap. Now the skin tone is looking perfect. And now at that point, I can go back in here go back in my gain and I can move it around a little bit if I just feel like I can get a better result. And I think this looks very, very natural. And if I take these two and do before and after, you can just see just by doing that, how much of a change we made. And now if I go to our before, so this is our previous version where we just desaturated the image without fixing any problems like the lips got duller, the face got duller, and then everything else, like she blended in so much with the background, whereas here, it looks like green screen, how much we pulled her out from the background. And at this point, we can use our gain, which works like our offset, but even better, and like lift it up. Like if I wanna just like, you know, bring our image up a little bit, I can do that. And just by doing this, and hue versus hue, see the changes that were made here? Like, look at how bad the image was looking before, how patchy it was, and we covered that just by making really broad stroke changes. So hue versus hue is your huge, huge friend. Uh, let's use it on another example. Same mindset. So we've already gone ahead, and actually, you know what? I thought we made that change. So I'm gonna go select these shots, and I'm going to ripple that change and I'm gonna make sure that that change is now made, great. So now let's come back to this. And this time, all I wanna do, we're going to move forward to our second part of this equation that I would recommend you using when it comes to getting natural skin tones, which is temp and tint in linear. Only use it in linear. If you do your temp and tint in your primaries, it's super artificial, horrible, I do not recommend it for one bit, but doing it in linear, 
it's literally as if you were making these changes in camera. So what I want to do is this. I want to pull this out, make it gray, like a steely gray. Okay, so I'm going to go in my color temp. I'm going to pull this back, do something like that. I'm going to go in my tint and I'm going to pull it up just a little bit, something like that. I'm also keeping an eye in this area too. I want this to be neutral. So this is looking neutral. I want this to have that steely gray. I want this to have that steely gray. And now everything is falling into place. Okay, look at how good this turtleneck looks now. And even the hands, like, you know, we're going from that gunky green to in a good spot. We're still not there yet. So now what I want to do, again, hue versus hue. I'm going to go in my yellow. I'm going to start lifting it up and I'm looking at her forehead. I don't want to overdo anything. Even if I just go that much. And if I go before, after. And now if I go here, I go before, there's a little green gunk, and then after, and that is completely balanced out. Now, I don't care about, you know, having blue in this area because the screen is illuminating blue light. So I don't want to affect that. I want to keep it natural if I go before and after. So anybody who's like moaning and complaining about Sony has so much green, it's like so gunky and weird. You just don't know these techniques to get it in a neutral space where it's hard to tell if it's Sony or Ari Alexa. And I'm not saying like, you know, Ari Alexa uh, is the same as Sony or Sony is the same as Ari Alexa. I mean, there's still a bunch of different variables that go into that because each camera manufacturer is doing their own secret sauce. But our goal is to not strip that character, but get it in that neutral space where we keep the character of each camera. Because this is the reason why your DP and director are picking a certain glass, picking a certain gear, because they want that look. They enjoy that look. So by you doing those secondary and crazy color manipulations, you are absolutely stripping the character, the look DNA of like what was intended. And this is doing the right thing. It's putting us in that space without destroying our image or the look DNA of each camera manufacturer. Now I'm going to show you another example of temp and tint. So we're going to go right here looking at this image. Remember, we had to pull the skin tone and then shift it in that direction, which just made it so artificial here. We obviously see the entire image has so much green. And then when we look at our skin tones right here, they're way away from like that skin tone indicator. So how do we get there? We just go in our tent, keep your life simple, and we just park it somewhere around here. And if I do before and after, done and done. The bra looks perfect, looks white. The white looks like the blouse looks white. Skin tones just can't get better than this. All of a sudden, the burn grass is separated from the rest of it. So we have like so much color separation there. Look at the bricks right here. Look at the sky, how it should look around that time of day. Fixed it like that. So if somebody is like looking at this image going, yeah, the thing that I don't like about black magic is that there's so much green everywhere, right? But it's not black magic. It's a user error. If you just correct the image, the skin tones are to die for. They're perfect. Now, let me show you another example um, where we can use qualifiers. So here we just didn't have enough juice in our skin tones and we ended up doing that, added, adding like saturation. The problem was, but the problem always is, start with balance. So what's happening, the reason why the skin tones look so blended with the background and muted and, and lifeless is because there's more green in our image. You can even see it right here. It's green biased. And then the red is right here. Then the blue is right here. So in order to fix that, we can just go in our gain, which is our offset in linear, because this is still set to linear. And I can just go and balance that out. So basically what I'm going to do I'm just looking right here and I try to balance it out. So now before green, red, blue, after very even. Look at this right here, how white it got compared to this. And we can even look at our vector scope. Everything is in the middle. And all of a sudden, the skin tones pop. If I do before and if I do after, look at this. There's so much more life in my skin tones now than before. And if I want to further enhance it, then I'm going to go right here and let's just use qualifiers. Why not? There's nothing wrong with it if it's used right. So I'm going to go here. I'm going to pull this close to something like that. I'm going to do this. And then I'm going to do that. And I'm going to denoise it quite a bit, come out of it. 
And the best parameter that you want to use when you're working with skin tones is your gamma, because this is where all those adjustments are going to happen. Whether there's somebody dark in the frame or light in the frame, most of the times this is where the adjustments are done. So I'm going to go in my gamma and I'm going to start doing this. I'm just looking at my guy right here. I don't want to go somewhere where he's not going to look real. So if I go before and after, I brought in so much juice. But now if I go to the other example, how unnatural and gunky and weird it looks, artificial it looks compared to our example. And we've pushed it quite a bit. I mean, if I go right here, how much juice and how much like literally life we added to our skin tones. And if I just go before and after. And now final example is this right here. Always be looking for anchors, okay? So anchors are gonna help you get your skin tones looking natural faster than anything else. What are anchors? Blacks and whites, all the neutral colors in your image, okay? So if I go to white, if I hover over here, look at where the three dots are formed in my parade. They're not even, they should be even if the shirt is white, right? So how can we make it even? We can just go in our gain, drop the red, and then pull the blue up a little bit. And now we can still keep it a little bit more red and green. Why? Because that's the lighting in the in the um, situation that they're in. But if I hover over now, we can even make it a little bit more. So I made it red bias, then green, then yellow, or then blue. And if I hover over now, before and after, world of a difference. Now this is looking nice gray, clean, clean as hell. This is looking so much cleaner. Just the forehead had so much overall warmth compared to now looking so much more separation and then forget about it. Like now if we go to our neutral point, this is before, so much like yellow seeping through and then after it just got so clean and we see the proof here. So we just got rid of it and now we don't need to do anything else. Like the skin tones look perfect and all of a sudden we're just like, this is why people like to shoot on Ari Alexa or anything from Ari, Ari Amira. Uh, RE35, like these cameras are the dominant force when it comes to the industry because it's just there. Like nothing renders the skin tones better than RE products and we can see it now. And all we have to do is just make that minor change instead of just like manipulating our image. Now you know how professionals get natural looking skin tones from any camera regardless of the limitations. So there you have it. When it comes to getting anything natural, whether you're going for a natural look or whether you're going for natural skin tones, the approach should be what I showed you here. Broad strokes and just do things as if they were done in camera so you can get an authentic image that is as close as possible to how each camera manufacturer intended their images to look like. And do not forget to check out the announcement for Memorial Day sale, all in the description and pinned in the comment of this video. On that note, I will see you guys in the next one. Peace, fam. Oh.